Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late December 2023 and it's very exciting. The AGM 154A JSAL has been added to the F15E. On the stations that you can see, it's a medium ranged unpowered glide munition. The guidance is INS GPS and the warhead is retarded cluster type. It's a kinematic weapon, it's unpowered, which means like the JDAM, the range is determined by the speed and altitude of the aircraft. At 40,000 feet supersonic, we can max out the range at about 70 miles. Here is the mission we'll do today. Here is our aircraft and we're starting about 70 miles from the target. I'll make this mission available to you guys and I'll put a link in the video description. Targets here are targets one, to three, four, five, six, and seven. Due to the nature of the weapon, each target is a platoon of lightly armored APCs. Shown behind the target is a method that can be used to designate the JSAL to that target. So CC mode, mission editor, weapon mode via T-Pod, weapon mode via air to ground radar, weapon mode via nav, and weapon mode via UFC. Don't worry too much about that now. There are three stages we need to do to program and deploy the weapon. Stage one, via the Smart Weapons page, we need to populate each weapon with target information. Stage two, via the Air to Ground Packs page, we need to create a weapon program. And finally, stage three, we need to obviously deploy the weapon. So first, stage one, Smart Weapons page. So right screen, Main menu, main menu, smart weapons. First, the scope of the weapons page. There are three modes from which we can populate target information into each of the weapons. We have the default weapon mode here, also CC mode. As part of the weapons mode, we also have TOO mode. TOO is currently not available, so currently two modes, weapon and CC. Within those two modes, there are five total methods we can use. So within CC mode, we have one method, which is the mission editor method. Within weapon mode, we have four methods. The first would be to use our T-Pod there. The second would be to use our air to ground radar. The th third mode would be nav mode. For instance, we could use our steer point one we've got selected here. We could convert it into a target point and we could use that as a method. And finally, UFC. We could use our scratch pad or our numpad here to manually enter coordinate details into the weapon. Now, to show those five methods off in detail takes a good 30 minutes. It's very detailed, and this is where the majority of the detail of using these smart weapons is. Luckily, I've already covered this, and this is really important. At this point, for the remainder of the smart weapons stage, I refer you to this video that I've already done, the F-15E JDAM video. I show the absolute details of using the mission editor, the targeting pod, air to ground radar, nav, and UFC methods. I'll link this at the top of the video description and you can click on it and you can use the timestamps in it to go to any part you want. And it covers all the functions and symbology of the smart weapons page. Right, so that saved us half an hour. And it's important to say at the time of making this video at least, setting up the JSAL and the JDAM in the smart weapons page is identical. But we do need to bomb something, so let's just set this up very quickly. So currently selected is this weapon here. Its current status is in it, which means it is not populated with the target information. So I'm going to go to CC mode in this case. Set one, mission one, transfer. Next weapon. Next mission. Set one, mission two, transfer. Obviously, this is all covered in detail in the JDAM video. Next weapon. Set two, mission one, transfer. That'll do. That's three bombs set up, two bombs not set up. Let's go to stage two, creating a weapon program in the packs page. So main menu, armament, air to ground. You can see the five weapons that we have here. The three that we've populated with targets have standby status. So they're ready to be used once we've created a program for them. Weapons four and five are in it status. So they cannot be used because they do not have target information. So with program one defaulted here, let's select the weapons we do want to use. One, two, and three. We can deploy them in auto mode or direct. 
Both work, but I haven't yet found a use case for auto, so direct is what I always use. Step we have to use. Fusing, I'm not sure if there's, there's a specific fuse we should use, so nose tail I know does work. That's our packs done and our program created. All we need now is to deploy the weapon, which is super simple. So first to the HUD. Ah, there's no information. Why is that? Whoops, I forgot air to ground mode and master arm on. HUD, we are traveling at 36,000 feet at Mark 1.2. So we're high and fast as we should be for a J cell. Our heading is there, directly towards the target shown by that marker there. This staple shows the azimuth range we can fly at to deploy the weapon, but obviously we want to be as close to the target as possible. Our target data block says that at current parameters, time to maximum range of launch is 1 minute and 5 seconds. We have a target selected. That target is 68.3 nautical miles from our current position. 2 minutes and 46 T rail time to release. That's not the maximum release. That's actually telling us when, if we had auto mode selected, the bomb would release. But we don't, so it's irrelevant. Otherwise, we're using a JSAL and we're using it in direct deploy mode. As per the JDAM, we have a DLZ, a dynamic launch zone here. We are at the bottom here. That's range going up. The chevron shows the range from us to the target, which is 68 miles. This marker here shows the maximum range at which we can launch the weapon and the weapon hit the target. We should reach that at current parameters in one minute and five seconds. So once the chevron reaches that marker there, we can drop the weapon. That marker there is symbolic. It shows if we were using auto mode, when the weapon would automatically deploy. And finally, and very importantly, we have our terminal staple here. If we want the weapon to not only hit the target, but achieve our three terminal parameters, which include the speed, the direction, and the vertical angle that the weapon hits the target at, then we must deploy the weapon when the chevron is within this staple here. Those terminal parameters are set as part of the Smart Weapons page, and of course that's included in detail in the JDAM video, so I refer you there. And that's literally as simple as it is, so I'm going to unpause. We, I'm going to power on towards the target, and off we go. Is there ever a case to deploy the weapon within its maximum range, but outside of the terminal status? Yeah, I think so. If, for some reason, you just can't get close enough to the target to deploy in the terminal staple here, like because of long range SAMs and whatnot, it may be a case you just have to cut your losses and drop between there and there. And that's certainly the case with JDAMs and JSAL, maybe the same thing as well. But in this case, no defense, so I'm gonna speed up and drop within the staple. So mark 1.5, and I'm gonna pause there. We're now within the maximum range marker. It tells us we're in range here and we have an ASL dropping down the HUD here, and it's our job to fly with a velocity vector here on that ASL. So that's straighten up, speed up again, and almost in the staple now, and it says we're in zone. We can now achieve our terminal parameters. External view, weapon release once, weapon release twice, weapon release three times, and we now have a big wait. Ah, one thing I forgot to show, once the weapons are deployed, we have our time to impact here, five minutes, and that shows the big ranges that these can achieve. They're gonna fly most of the time subsonic for 50 miles, so that's gonna take several minutes, off we go. About to enter the terminal phase. They're entering the terminal phase now. We're going to try to achieve the parameters that we have set. They'll explode, or should I say deploy, above the target. And I wonder if I can go and see them. These separate munitions. There we go. You can see their little parachuted munitions. You can see the spread of the munitions there. Targets one to three hit. That's all I want to show. It will change slightly and new features will be added into the Smart Weapons page and probably these weapons in the future and I'll cover them as best I can. I hope that was useful for now and bye-bye.